Welcome, welcome. Good Thursday morning. It's June 10th and we are coming to you from the Cathedral of Our Lady of Walsingham. And this is the Rays of Light, Rainbows of Peace, Divine Will Prayer Senegal. Um, let me change the screen that you're seeing. Hold on one moment. Divine Will Prayer Senegal. And we're in the midst of studying um, Louisa and Marriage in the Divine Will, Lessons by Father Thomas Celso, and this is going to be lesson four today. And before we begin, I just, for some reason, the Holy Spirit just put on my heart that if anyone out there is listening that's in uh, the Protestant churches, uh, especially the Anglicans, you know, we have such a special gift given to us uh, by the Holy Spirit of the Ordinariate of the Chair of St. Peter. And that's the welcoming arm to help you come back into full communion um, with the Catholic Church. Um, th these, these liturgical practices have been, um, this patrimony, this rich patrimony has been preserved here and brought in, into the Catholic Church uh, through a special document that Pope Benedict XVI wrote 11 years ago called Anglican Norum Cetibus. Um, that's just a fancy way of saying that they may be one with us, Father, as we are one in Christ. Um, anyway, consider it, look into it, the ordinariate of the chair of St. Peter. Um, so let us begin as we always begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus, come pray in our praying and make this cynical your command so that your kingdom be established and your divine will reign in the midst of creatures. We call all the heavenly court, all angels and saints to participate in all the divine will does in this cynical, praying in the name of all creatures, past, present, and future. So to begin our journey in this, uh, entering this cynical of prayer, we're going to begin with the most holy rosary gifted to us by the Blessed Mother to help quiet our soul from all the worries and distractions of the world and enter into a spirit of silence and attentiveness. We're taught in the divine will that we can bilocate into these mysteries and pick a person, pick a place, pick a vantage point and Really be there. Allow the Lord to carry you there in these mysteries. Don't be distracted by current topics or other revelations, public or private. And remember, if you're running your own prayer groups, it's important to have a priest as your leader, teacher, and spiritual director. In this group, we belong to, um, we take the guidance of Father Celso. We belong to Christ, <laughs> but we take guidance under Father Celso uh, with his gift of his priesthood. And Jesus tells Louisa that the priests will be the ones to feed the little children of the Holy Divine Will. So we pray for all priests, especially our parish priests, to come and lead Divine Will prayer groups. And if you're in the area next week, Father Huff, the pastor here at Our Lady of Walsingham, is going to come here in person and check us out. Um, he's already graciously given us his permission to meet here on campus. And I guess there's just maybe been a little bit of a buzz around campus. and now. He wants to come see for himself what we're doing here. So, and Saint Anibale Maria de Francia, who is our patron saint of our group, reminds us of the command of our Savior to pray the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. So we are going to move over to the Luminous Mysteries. It's Thursday and Lord, we offer ourselves to you. Let us live only of your divine will. Let us move there as though in a, in a city that, that we just imbue all that you have to give us in your divine will and help us to desire only that which you want, for in that is true happiness. Fiat. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The First Luminous Mystery, The Baptism in the Jordan Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Second Luminous Mystery, The Wedding at Cana Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Third Luminous Mystery, The Proclamation of the Kingdom Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Fourth Luminous Mystery, 
the Transfiguration. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. The Fifth Luminous Mystery, The Institution of the Eucharist Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, to thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O most holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that by meditating on these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain, and obtain what they promise, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, and now we're going to move into our prayer of consecration to the Holy Divine Will, followed by the prayer of the glorification of the servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. Prayer of consecration to the Holy Divine Will. O oh, adorable and divine will, here I am before the immensity of your light, that your eternal goodness may open to me the doors and make me enter into it to form my life all in you, divine will. Therefore prostrate before your light, I, the littlest among all creatures, come, O oh, adorable will, into the little group of the first children of your supreme fiat. Prostrate in my nothingness, I beseech and implore your endless light that it may want to invest me and eclipse everything that does not belong to you in such a way that I may do nothing other than look, comprehend, and live in you, divine will. It shall be my life, the center of my intelligence, the enrapturer of my heart and of my whole being. In this heart, the human will shall no longer have life, I shall banish it forever, and shall form the new Eden of peace, of happiness, and of love. With it I shall always be happy. I shall have a unique strength, and a sanctity that sanctifies everything, and brings everything to God. Here, prostrate, I invoke the help of the sacrosanct trinity, that they admit me to live in the cloister of the divine will so as to restore in me the original order of creation, just as the creature was created. Celestial Mother, Sovereign Queen of the Divine Fiat, take me by the hand and enclose me in the light of the Divine Will. You shall be my guide, my tender mother. You shall guard your child and shall teach me to live and to maintain myself in the order and in the bounds of the Divine Will. Celestial Sovereign, to your Immaculate Heart I entrust my whole being. I shall be the tiny little child of the Divine Will. You shall teach me the Divine Will, and I shall be attentive in listening to you. You shall lay your blue mantle over me, so that the Infernal Serpent may not dare to penetrate into the sacred Eden to entice me and make me fall into the maze of the human will. Heart of my highest good, Jesus, you shall give me your flames, that they may burn me, consume me, and nourish me, 
to form in me the life of the supreme will. Saint Joseph, you shall be my protector, the custodian of my heart, and shall keep the keys of my will in your hands. You shall keep my heart jealously, and shall never give it to me again, that I may be sure never to go out of the will of God. Guardian angel, guard me, defend me, help me in everything, so that my Eden may grow flourishing and be the call of the whole world into the will of God. Celestial court, come to my help, and I promise you to live always in the divine will. Amen. Prayer for the glorification of the servant of God, Louisa Picaretta. O August and most holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the gift of the holiness of your faithful servant, Louisa Picaretta. She lived, O Father, in your divine will, becoming under the action of the Holy Spirit, in conformity with your Son, obedient even to the death on the cross, victim and host pleasing to you, thus cooperating in the work of redemption of mankind. Her virtues of obedience, humility, supreme love for Christ and the Church lead us to ask you for the gift of her glorification on earth so that your glory may shine before all and your kingdom of truth, justice, and love may spread all over the world in the particular charisma of the Fiat Voluntas Tua, Sicut in Cielo et in Terra. We appeal to her merits to obtain from you, Most Holy Trinity, the particular grace for which we pray to you, with the intention to fulfill your divine will. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This last prayer was composed by the late Archbishop Giovann Battista Piccieri in Trani, October 29, 2005. May he rest in the eternal peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fiat. Okay, and now we move ever deeper in prayer and enter the rounds of prayer. We are in ordinary time, and we will be praying the third day, midday rounds, followed by our lesson from Father Salso. Fiat. Thursday, midday. Antiphon. Divine will, how much you love me! How adorable and admirable you are! Round of Creation. 11. Prayer. I place my I love you upon each thought of creature, so that in each thought I may ask for the dominion of the divine fiat over each intelligence. I worship you and I honor you. Through each thought of creature, I worship you and I honor you. Over each thought of creature, I worship you and I honor you. In every thought of creature, I worship you and I honor you. 
in each thought of creature. I love you. Your kingdom come, but please let it be known, loved and possessed by the human generations. I worship you and I honor you, and I ask for the dominion of the divine fiat over each intelligence. I worship you and I honor you in the flight of every gaze. I worship you and I honor you through each gaze. I worship you and I honor you and I leave my I worship you and I honor you within them. I love you. Your kingdom come. Oh, please let it be known, loved and possessed by the human generations. I worship you and I honor you. Spoken through each mouth. I worship you and I honor you in the sound of every word. I worship you and I honor you through each word. I worship you and I honor you, and I seal in them my, I worship you and I honor you to my creator. I love you and pray you that your eternal fiat be known. And just as it rains triumphantly in heaven, it may come to rain triumphantly in the midst of creatures. Prayer. Lord, all the glory which creatures should give you with their mouths, but do not. I intend to give you myself with my mouth, and I impetrate for them to make good and holy use of the mouth by uniting myself always with the very mouth of Jesus. Antiphon O divine will, how much love and power you contain for those who live in you. Reading Volume 35, November 29th, 1937 When Louisa the creature listens to our I love you and returns it in our emphasis of love, as if reconciled by her love, we say, Finally, we've been heard. Our love found Louisa, the one to go to, a place for refuge. We have been recognized. We found the one who says I love you. Then our love makes a feast. But when we cannot find the one who says I love you, we don't find the one who recognizes us who listens to us, the one who loves us. How hard it is to love not being loved. How I wish that everybody knew that with my love I sustain them, I hug them, I love them, and I make them breathe. I love them and I give them a heartbeat. I love them and I give them speech. I love them, and I give them the step. I love them, and I give them motion, thinking, food, water. All that they are and receive is the effect of my flowing love. Responsory How I wish that everybody knew that with my love I sustain them, I hug them, I love them, and I make them breathe. You have reached the end of Thursday, midday. Fiat. Okay, so before we begin, uh, two things. Number one, uh, the greatest thing it, it given to the world is uh, the, the divine will. Uh, Jesus says the book of heaven is the greatest gift. Uh, so if you want the book of heaven, Hours of the Passion, the Virgin Mary, you can get one of these little flash, flash drives and you can wear it around your neck so it's close to your heart, which will transform you. I mean, that's what Jesus is saying. So it's a tiny little thing for a flash drive for your computer. So wherever you are, you can put it into your computer and you'll have all the volumes. So this is this is this is carrying all 36 volumes right here. 
So that's one thing that you could do. The second thing is uh, the reason this whole uh, gay uh, agenda for uh, gay marriages is because the, the, the devil knows what God is doing with the divine will. And he's calling us to this marriage. So the devil is trying to cause as much trouble as possible for the Lord. So we can see also the seriousness of the time that we're in. Um, the reason this is, I think the 10th state just yesterday uh, said that they want gay marriage. Okay. Uh, again, we have to know that the devil is going to try everything possible so that the people will not marry God, but will marry each other. You know, I mean, so you can see the time. Okay, 18, uh, volume 18, uh, November 5th, 1925. Lend us the Holy Trinity, the ear of your heart, and listen to our most profound moans in the sacrament of marriage. How many disorders in it? Marriage was elevated by me to a sacrament in order to place in it the, a sacred bond, the symbol of the, whole, the sacrosanct trinity, the divine love which encloses it. And so the love which was to reign in the father and the mother and the children, the concord, the peace, was to symbolize the celestial family, the Holy Trinity. And I, Jesus, was to have on earth as many other families similar to the family of the Creator, destined to populate the earth like many, uh, as many terrestrial angels, then to bring them back to populate the celestial regions. But ah, uh, how many moans is seen families of sin being formed in, in the marriage, which symbolizes hell, with discord, with lack of love, with hatred, at which populate the earth like many rebellious angels who will serve to populate hell. The Holy Spirit moaning and harrowing moans in each marriage and seeing so many infernal dens being formed on earth. Therefore, place your requital of love in each marriage, in each creature in which comes to the light. In this way, your loving moan will render less uh, sorrowful our most holy trinity's continuous moans. So, again, our job is to repair uh, the marriages are not what God originally planned. And uh, marriages are, are, are very, very difficult. People say to me, how can you be celibate? I say, how can you be married? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I don't have the grace. Uh, I don't have the grace for that, that's for sure. Uh, it, it's, uh, I mean, i got to wake up. I can look at one face. I don't have to look at another face. You know? you know, sometimes I don't even look at my face. So... Uh, volume 24. Oh, yeah, yeah. How can you get that $5? All right. <laughs> volume 24, uh, 6, 12, 28. After this, since it was the Feast of Corpus Christi, I was thinking to myself that this day was the Feast of the Marriage, which Blessed Jesus did with the souls in the Most Holy Sacrament of Love. So, again, here is another. It's the Feast of Marriage, okay? The Feast of Corpus Christi, the Feast of Corpus Domini, the Body of Christ. Now, this is important for us because that's coming up, you know, within the month. Uh, let's, let's celebrate this day uh, as our wedding day, okay, uh, with the Lord. My beloved Jesus, moving in my interior, told me, my daughter Louisa, the true marriage with humanity was done in creation. Nothing was lacking either to the soul or to the body. Everything was done with royal so much as some soup. Sumptuousness, thank you. An immense palace was prepared for the human nature such that no king or emperor can have one similar to it, which is the whole universe. A starry heaven and its vault, a sun which would never extinguish its light, uh, flourishing gardens in which the happy couple, God and man, was to stroll, amuse itself, and maintain a continuous, uninterrupted feast of our marriage. And the garments woven not with matter, but formed of purest light by our most holy trinity's power as befitted royal persons. Now, going to the altar, there's, there always used to be a canopy over the altar, okay? Uh, that symbolized the wedding canopy. Uh, this is the wedding feast. It's, uh, so if you're ever going to redesign a church, make sure that there's this canopy over the altar. It's very, very important that... Uh, uh, we, we recognize this marriage uh, between God and man. Okay? And, and think about it. It's, it's an immense palace was prepared for the human nature. Okay? What God breathed into Adam was this wedding. He did not want man to be alone. Okay? So temporarily he had Eve for him, but eternally he was to be married to God. See, this is what, this is what our God wants for us. 
So going back to Adam, everything was beautiful was beauty in Adam, soul and body, because the one who prepared the marriage and formed it was of unreachable beauty. So from the external sumptuousness of so many enchanting beauties present in the whole of creation, you, Louisa, can imagine the interior seas of sanctity, of beauty, of light, of science, etc., in which the interior of Adam possessed all the acts of Adam, interior and exterior, were as many musical keys which formed the most beautiful melodies, sweet melodies, harmonious, harmonious, and maintained the joy of the, of the marriage. And each additional act that he would dispose himself to do was a new little sonata that Adam would prepare to call his spouse to the light with him. My most holy divine will that dominated humanity brought him, Adam, the new continuous act and the likeness to the one who had created Adam and married Adam. But in such a great fe feast, man broke the strongest bond in which lay the whole validity of our marriage and through which it had been in force. He withdrew from our most holy divine will. Because of this, the marriage was broken. And since all the rights were lost, only the memory of it was left. But the substance, the life, the effects no longer existed. So here, Jesus is saying that he wants us to recognize that's why we, are, we were created, to be the spouse of the Lord. And that's why Jesus has gone. He's preparing a place for his spouse. He's going to come back to take us with him. Where? To eternity, to paradise, to Eden, to heaven. That's where we belong. So if you're, if you're focusing on the things of this earth, uh, how sad that is. If your treasures are here of the earth, how sad that is. Our job is to embrace the things of heaven, to, to be ready for eternity. Now, the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist, in which my love overabound all possible and imaginable ways, cannot be called either the first or the true marriage of creation. For I, Jesus, do nothing but continue what I, Jesus, did when I was on earth, according to the needs present in the soul. With some, I make myself the compassionate doctor in order to heal them. With some, the teacher to instruct them. With some, the father to forgive them. With some, to uh, light to give them sight. I, Jesus, give strength to the weak, courage to the timid, peace to the restless. In some, I, Jesus, continue my redemption and virtue. However, all these miseries exclude the true marriage. So think about that. Everything God's done that the church has been focusing on uh, to heal us, to bring us to, uh, to himself, doesn't talk about, doesn't focus on the, the true marriage, what Jesus wants. This is what's coming. He has gone to prepare a place for us, and he's coming back to take us with him. Uh, only the Father knows when that wedding chamber will be complete. Uh, so he's going to, he's going, that's why somebody said, well, how can the Father not know? I mean, how could Jesus not know? If Jesus and the Father are one, how could Jesus not know? Well, it's simple. He says to the Father, your will. So it's, it's the, when it's ready, then Jesus comes back to take us with him. No young man marries a woman who is ill. At most, he waits for her to recover. Or a young woman who is weak, who offends him very often. And if the groom is a king and, a love, and loves her, at most, he waits for the bride to get well, to love him, and for her condition to become somehow satisfactory and not only inferior, and, not, and so not to inferior, so inferior to his. Now, the condition in which the poor humanity finds itself is still that of a poor, ill one. Okay, so we are still sick. Jesus and I, Jesus, am waiting for my most holy divine will to be known and to reign in the midst of creatures. This is the healing. And what is he doing? He has, he's revealed this. Again, these writings were basically given to the church in 1996, February 2nd, 1996. Jesus is waiting, he says very, very clearly, that my most holy divine will be known. To whom? To those that he's given the writings. To make it rain. Whom? In the midst of creatures, that's us. It's not your family. They've already said no. It's not your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers. None of them want it. So Jesus is waiting that we know this and let it rain. Know it and possess it. So why isn't the kingdom of God here? It's because of us. We have not surrendered. We have not been submissive. We have found reason to not read. We have reasons not to uh, possess this gift. You want to blame anybody? You blame yourself. Why? Because you have the book of heaven. 
And if it's not here, it's not your it's not your brother or sister's fault. It's not the guy in the White House's fault. It's your fault. It's our fault. I'm waiting for my most holy divine will to be known. By whom? By us. To reign. By whom? By us. For it then, that for, for it will give them true health, royal garments, and a beauty worthy of me. Then the marriage will take place. By whom? By us. You know, somebody said to me, oh, I, I can't wait to preach the divine will. I said, that's not the divine will. The divine will is to live it. I, I want to tell everybody about this. That's not what the divine will is. It's to live it. To put this into practice. Then I will, Jesus, form again the true and original marriage, which he promised, which he breathed into Adam at the beginning. Uh, volume 24, 6, 16, 28. I was thinking about what was written uh, here above, and Blessed Jesus continued telling me, My daughter, it is indeed true that the Supreme Being made its marriage with humanity at the beginning of creation, and it happened as to a husband when his wicked wife induced him to separate in court. But in spite of this, an affliction uh, remains in his heart, and he thinks and yearns that if his chosen one should change, who knows, I may once again be able to unite and bind myself with her, with a bond of marriage. And therefore, he often lets news reach her ear through messengers that he loves her. So here is uh, Hosea and Gomer. If you haven't read Hosea, read it. It's great. We're Gomer. Uh, and uh, God is Hosea. And uh, he basically humiliates himself to go after Gomer. He humiliates himself so that he has his wife back. So God did. Even though the marriage with humanity was unbound, unbound in the divine court, he got kept in affection and though far away, longed for the new bond of marriage with humanity. So much so that God did not destroy the palace that he had formed with so many sumptuousness and magnificence, nor did he, God, take away from her the good of the son that formed the day, but God left everything so that the very one who had offended him might make use of it. Even more, God maintained the correspondence by choosing from the very beginning of the world, now one of the good, now another, who were like messengers. And like many postmen, some brought the little letters, some the telegrams, some the phone calls from heaven, in which it was announced that the faraway spouse God had not forgotten her, that God loved her and that he, God, wanted the return of basically his ungrateful spouse. So in the Old Testament, I, more than, the more I, Jesus, multiplied the good, the patriarchs, the prophets, the more pressing were the invitations of the mail that ran between heaven and earth through which God was sending news, that he, God, desired the new union. This was so true that unable to contain the outer of his love any longer, and since decayed humanity was not yet disposed at a time, God made an exception, exposing the Virgin Mary Queen and, and the humanity of the word with bonds of true marriage, that like, so that by virtue of them, decayed humanity might be lifted up again, and I, Jesus, might form the marriage of, with the entire humanity. So my humanity formed the new engagement with her on the cross, and everything I, Jesus, did and suffered up to dying on the cross raw preparations in order to carry out the desired marriage in the kingdom of my most holy divine will. So here, that's now, 2,000 years later. Now, that's now. It's going to begin. And it's going to begin with us. Uh, again, he, he needs us uh, to turn to him so that the whole world can be saved. Okay, who's going to do this? It's the children of the divine will. Now, after the engagement... There are pledges and gifts left to be exchanged, and these are the knowledges about my fee, divine fiat. Through them, humanity has given back the great gift that man, that Adam rejected in Eden, the eternal and infinite, interminable gift of my most holy divine will. In this gift will attract decayed humanity so much that she will give us, triumph God, in exchange, the gift of her poor human will 
and that human will will be the confirmation and the seed of the union of the spouses after such a long chain of correspondence of faithfulness on the part of God and the inconstancy, the ingratitude, and the coldness on the part of creatures. So again, who's going to do this? It's us. That's our job, to link ourselves with Louisa and to do what Louisa has done. Again, uh, this is the gift of gifts. This is the prodigy of prodigies. Louisa Picaretta and the divine will. It's not just the divine will. If you don't have Louisa Picaretta, you do not have the divine will. So what is Jesus asking? He's, say, he's saying, uh, accept this wedding proposal and get ready for the marriage. Be the faithful, uh, uh, not, don't be the foolish virgin. You know, have your oil ready, which means to be in the state of grace. Have your white garment ready, which means to be pure of heart. Get ready for this marriage. Plan on it. Okay, how can we plan on it? The Feast of Corpus Christi. Okay, get ready for this will be this will be the feast of our uh, uh, marriage with God. We want to say yes to Him. We said yes to the mystical marriage. We said yes to the cross. Uh, the marriage of the cross. Uh, and now we say yes to this grand marriage. I mean, we really have to get ready for this. Uh, if you want to say the, the mystical marriage was of the Father, the, the cross marriage was of the Son, and the grand marriage is of the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to embrace this uh, is what God is asking. Uh, through Louisa, one with Louisa, how? By reading, studying, and putting into practice the, the truths of the writings. And as you read this, Heaven becomes more part of you, and you become more part of heaven. So, my daughter Louisa, man degraded himself and lost all goods because he went out of my most holy divine will. In order to ennoble himself, to re reacquire everything, and to receive the rehabilitation of the marriage with his creator, he must enter once again uh, the divine fiat from which he came. That's our job. We must, we must once again re-enter into this divine fiat. Now, Jesus says that Louisa is the redemptrix of the fiat of God. That means you can't do this without Louisa. So, read. The, these, these, these truths are only from Louisa. If you want John of the Cross, Trees of Avila, Catholic of Siena, Siena, God bless you. That's wonderful. But it's not divine will. If you want St. Uh, Dina Belagere, if you want uh, St. Um, uh, Faustina, if you want St. Maximilian Colby, if you want... Uh, Mother Teresa, if you want Mother Angelica, if you want Mother, if you want uh, uh, Blessed John Paul II, that's wonderful, but it's not divine will. You, we have to get to the point where you have to say, all I want is the divine will. And as you read this, study this, you, you are receiving, you are reacquiring everything. You are receiving the rehabilitation of the marriage of God. You are entering once again into the divine fiat from which you came. That's what God breathed into Adam. There are no ways in the middle. You can't, you can't just say, well, I want to do this and this. I've, I've seen many people leave the divine will because they want to do holy things, good things, saintly things. They become disobedient to the divine will because they want holy things. Again, you give that up. You have a holy indifference to that. And Jesus says, there are no ways in the middle. Not even my very redemption is sufficient to make man return to the beginning of the happy area of his creation. That's where most people are. That's where most priests are. That's where most sisters are. Uh, even bishops. Uh, they want redemption. Well, we got to make a better world. Now we're going to have a new evangelization. Okay, these are good and holy things, but it's not the divine will. The new evangelization is the divine will, but the church doesn't know it yet. Uh, very, very clear. Um, the redemption, uh, the very redemption, uh, not even my very redemption is sufficient to make man return to the beginning of the happy era of his creation. Again, we want, God wants more for us than just redemption. Now, that might sound heretical, but he wants sanctification. He's given us creation. He has now redeemed us, and now he wants to bring about sanctification. This is why the, the Vani Creator Spiritus is so important for us 
Because if we are not praying this, how are we going to receive it? Every day you have to sing to the Holy Spirit. Sing to the Holy Spirit the song of Vani Karata Spiritus. Know it. Memorize it. Make it part of your life. How can, you do, how can I do this? Well, it's very easy with a computer. You just turn it on and you sing it every day. I mean, the, like everything was made for us at this time. Because God is depending on us to bring us back, he says, to the happy era of creation. Redemption is a means. Redemption is a way. Redemption is a light. Redemption is a help. But redemption is not the end. The end is my most holy divine will. Okay, that's sanctification. Because my most holy divine will was the beginning. And by justice, one who is at the beginning must also be the end. That's the wedding band. The beginning and the end. It never ends. It's full circle. Therefore, humanity must be enclosed in my divine volition to be given back her noble origin, her noble happiness, and to place the marriage with her God in force once again. Again, this is what divine will is all about. Nothing less than that. Therefore, the great good that my redemption did to man is not enough for our love. See, he wants more for us. So if you're following um, uh, the lives of the saints, I mean, God bless you. But Jesus is saying, I want more for you. Not just the prayers of the saints, but I want, I want the divine will to reign in you. So you look at the Holy Father. Everybody is enamored by him, and he is a good man, a holy man. Uh, God is going to use him very powerfully. But his focus is St. Francis. Now, St. Francis had the, the stigmata. St. Francis, you know, talked to the animals. You know, St. Francis rebuilt God's church. But he does, he's, it's not the divine will. I can't wait for the Pope of the divine will who will be living a divine life. And I pray that it's this Pope. I pray that he receives this before he dies and that he gives us this great gift of the divine will. But you see, our focus is not of saintly things, of good things, of holy things. That is redemption. God wants to bring about sanctification. We've prayed a hundred years for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And so God is asking us to really pray more intensely now with Louisa so that the kingdom can be established. So he says, therefore, my great good, the great good of my redemption did, did to man uh, is not enough for our love, but yearns for more. True love never, content, it never contends itself. Only then is it content when it can say, I have nothing else to give him. And knowing that man can return to a happy, victorious, and glorious and the noble state in which he was created by God when God breathed into him. And this means by my most holy divine will reigning in their midst. This is the Holy Spirit. This is the time of sanctification. This is why all the divine yearnings, all the divine sighs, all the divine manifestations that I give to you, Louisa, are directing toward making our divine will known. To whom? To us in order to make the divine will reign. Where? In us. So as to be able to say to our uh, love, calm yourself, for our most holy divine will's beloved son has reached his destiny. To go back to where we were before the fall. This is, this is what's coming, and God is asking us to do it. He is now in possession of our most uh, our divine inheritance uh, that was given to him in creation, and that's the divine inheritance is volume twenty through volume thirty six. And as you read volume twenty through volume thirty six, you you are you are beginning to embrace this divine inheritance of God. You know you have to start out with one through ten, which is to be a divine mirror of Jesus. In order, you have to become a saint. But then 11 through 19 is you have to begin to live in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? So that we can go to volume 20 through volume 36 to receive the divine inheritance of the Father. This is our fiat, the divine, to, to take possession of the divine inheritance which was given to Adam in creation. This is our divine fiat. 
And while he possesses what is ours, we train because that God possess him. Mutual possession. This is marriage. The husband possesses the wife. The wife possesses the husband. Everything of the husband belongs to the wife. Everything of the wife belongs to the husband. This is the possession. This is the marriage that God wants with us. Therefore, the marriage is fulfilled once again, and the spouses have returned to their place of honor. There is nothing left but to celebrate and to enjoy a good so great and after so long a sorrow, 6,000 years. Now we begin to live the 7,000th year. This is, this is the day of rest. God, God with man and man with God. Volume 30, 6, 17, 32. Blessed daughter Louisa, my ex and those of my queen mama, our uh, Jesus and Mary's love, our Jesus and Mary's sanctity, are an act of continuous waiting to enclose your ex, Louisa, in between ours, our own, so as to give them the shape of Jesus and Mary's act and place the seal of Jesus and Mary's own upon Louisa's ex. Okay, so what does that mean? Jesus and Mary are the new Adam and the new Eve. They have a, uh, they, the, Louisa is the newborn. Louisa is the firstborn. So it's a poor way of saying it, but it's like, you know, it's, Jesus, Louisa has the DNA of Jesus and Mary. Okay. Uh, Jesus, Louisa is the true daughter of Jesus, the true daughter of Mary. I mean, that's, I mean, you can't think of it humanly. It's, it's divine. He is the new Adam. She is the new Eve. Who is the newborn? Louisa. Who was, who was Adam's newborn and Eve's newborn was Cain. What did Cain do? He killed his brother, murdered. First sin was murder. And that's been going on now for 6,000 years. Now, Jesus and Mary say, I'm going to, we're going to start mankind again again. Right now, we have redeemed him. Our Lady co-redeemed. Now we begin again with a newborn. She will be the mother of the second generation of the children of light. Who, who is this Louisa Picaretta? Why is the devil so angry? Why is he causing such havoc all over the world? It's because he senses Louisa. He sees Louisa. He knows things are going to change. He knows his kingdom's coming to an end. So what is the Lord asking of us? Give your fiat. Work one with Louisa so that you can have also have the true life of Jesus <clears throat> and the true life of Mary. So that's what God is doing. <clears throat> He's asking us, pleading with us to really begin to live this abundant life. In fact, you, Louisa, must know <clears throat> that the acts of the sovereign of heaven, Jesus and Mary, uh, excuse me, the acts of the sovereign Mary in heaven are braided with my acts, and therefore they are inseparable. And Louisa, who lives in my holy divine will, comes to operate in the middle of our braiding. You take three strands to braid. Um, it's Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And Louisa's acts remain enclosed in between Jesus and Mary's acts, which keeps them in custody as triumphs and works of the holy fiat of God. <clears throat> Nothing enters into Jesus and Mary's acts, <clears throat> if not a birth from it. See then where the sanctity of one, Louisa, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> who lives in our will is formed. In the middle of our sanctity, Louisa loves in the center of our love. Louisa operates in the midst of our works. So Louisa, who operates in our volition, will feel as though in her nature the inseparability from Jesus and Mary's act. See, that's why we go to Louisa. I want to be one with Jesus and Mary. On my own, it is impossible. There's no way. I can't, I, I can't even get to the mystical marriage. For on myself, I, I, all I can do is sin. That's all that I'm good at. Jesus and Mary want us to come to them. So they've given us Louisa. St. Louis de Montfort was to Jesus through Mary. Louisa is to Jesus and Mary through her, through Louisa. This is what we want. We want to be braided with Jesus and Mary, interwoven with Jesus and Mary. We don't want to ever be separated from Jesus and Mary. So we go to Louisa. Um, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, it, again, this is the most beautiful thing that we could ever do, uh, being true children of Jesus and Mary, like Louisa. 
How? By being linked to Louisa. So one who operates in our volition will feel as though in her nature in the inseparability, uh, Louisa from Jesus and Mary, thanks, uh, the acts that we, Jesus and Mary, form her own, just as the light is inseparable from the heat and the heat from the light. Therefore, they are our continuous triumph. See, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is to become like her son. Who is like her son? Louisa. The triumph, the Eucharistic reign of Jesus is to become like his mother. Who is like his mother? Louisa. She has the true, the true life of Jesus and Mary. So the triumph, the Eucharistic reign of Christ, is going to happen in and through and for Louisa and the souls linked to, into, linked to Louisa. This is what God is planning. This is what God wants. So this triumph is going to be here. It's, it's Jesus and Mary's glory, Jesus and Mary's victory over the human will. It is uh, Jesus and Mary's divine property. Jesus and Mary formed in Louisa, and Louisa forms in Jesus and Mary. <clears throat> so this life that our God wants us to possess goes beyond a holy, good, and saintly life. Are you willing to give up a holy uh, life? Are you willing to give up a saintly life? Are you willing to give up a good life? What for? Wait a minute. What for? What for the divine life? That's, that's what Jesus is saying. I have more to give you than you have ever you could ever ex have expected. I want to give you a divine life. I want to give you a divine marriage. I want, I want you to possess eternity while on earth. I want you to be peaceful, joyful, and happy while on earth. This is the life that, this is why the divine will is so great. You know, uh, People will, will, will talk to you about this and that. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we are with Jesus and Mary through Louisa with this great life. The human volition and the divine volition kiss each other continuously. They fuse together. And God carries out his divine life in the soul, Louisa. And Louisa carries out her life in God. So look at, look at the worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity that is all around you. We have no part of that. Why? Because that's the things of the earth. We are now, we are now part of the things of heaven. We, God, what God is going to give to us is what he breathed into Adam. What God is going to give to us is what he uh, wants for us now, not after we die. So, I mean, the, the things that, that God is, is offering to us uh, have never been seen, never been seen by the saints. Not one saint experienced this because it wasn't time. This is Louisa's gift. But we are reading this. Can you imagine if St. Francis was reading this? What he would do to possess this life. What St. Teresa would. I mean, St. Teresa wanted to live in the end times. She, because she knew God was going to do something great. He saved the best for last. You know, our job is to read, study, put this into practice, to accept this proposal, to embrace this marriage, uh, to begin to live it now, not to be separated from God. How can that be done through Louisa Picaretta? This is, this is what God is offering us. Furthermore, for the soul, Louisa, who lives in my most holy divine will, there is nothing that belongs to my fiat over which Louisa does not acquire her rights, her right over our divine being, her right over the celestial mother, her right over the angels, her right over over the saints, her right over the heavens, her right over the sun, her right over the whole of creation, her right and God and the Virgin and everyone acquire the right over Louisa. It's mutual possession. This is what God breathed into Adam. Adam was Lord of the earth. He wore the royal vestments of the sun. 
And when he turned from the divine will, he was naked and he had to leave the kingdom. And Jesus says to Louisa, I cannot give this gift back to Adam because Adam would lose it again. That, those are words of Jesus. But he says, I give it to you, Louisa, because you will not lose this. And your children will not lose this as Adam's children lost it. This is God is doing this. And that's what St. Louis de Montfort says. In the final days, God is going to do for man. Uh, he's going to raise the greatest saints ever in the history of the church, the history of the world. And it's nothing that they have done, but what God has done for them. This gift is, is so astonishing. And all God is asking of us is to, to say yes to the, the fiat, uh, to say yes to Louisa, to embrace Louisa, read, study, and put into practice these truths. Our God has great, great plans, but he will not interfere with your freedom. You have to, you have to propose this to God. You have to give your yes to God, to his proposal to you. You have to say yes, and then you wait for him. With a candle, a candle in the window, like all Jewish virgins did, waiting for their spouse, waiting for the Lord. And he's coming back to take us with him. It happens when two young spouses unite themselves together in an indissoluble bond such that on both sides they acquire the right over their very persons and over everything that belongs to both, a right that no one can take away from them. The same for the one Louisa who lives in our most holy divine will. Louisa forms the new, the true, the real marriage with the supreme God and with it a nuptial is formed with everything that belongs to God. Oh, how beautiful it is to see Louisa espoused to all, the dear, the favorite, the beloved of all. And with the right, everyone wants Louisa. Everyone yearns to enjoy Louisa and to keep Louisa together with them. And Louisa loves everyone. Louisa gives all the right over her and gives herself to all. It is the new and the extensive family of her creator God that Louisa has acquired. Do you see what, what God is, has planned for us? Uh, it, it's to begin to live this abundant life. She's done this. So uh, our God is offering us these books, offering us the opportunity, even, th even though nothing's official, to say to us, you have to get ready for what's coming. See, once, once Luis is made venerable, Everything, everything, it's the domino effect. Everything starts happening very, very, very quickly. Because what, what is bound on earth is bound in heaven. Once the Pope says, Luisa Picaretta, everything begins. How glorious this is, this time we're living in. And all that the Lord is asking of us is that we give our fiat to let this happen. Let it be done as you say. Don't try to figure it out. Don't limit God. Don't say, I doubt that. Well, once you say that, God says, fine. Then it can't happen to you. God always backs up. I've seen that with many people in the divine will. It's really nice, but I just find it difficult to believe. God says, fine. I can't give you anything else. That's where you stay. And all of those people that said that have left. I don't know. I like St. Francis. Saint, I don't know who Louisa is. God says, fine. You, that's limiting God. You, and, and don't limit God. I keep on saying, I say it all the time, who is this Louisa Picaretta that he keeps on talking about? Who is she? That, that Jesus says, you are the mother of the second generation of the children of light. Who are you, Louisa Picaretta? That you are the newborn, the firstborn. That Jesus has breathed into you as, as God breathed into Adam. Who are you, Louisa Bicaretta? I mean, this is just astonishing. Who is this newborn? And everything that Jesus says, we, we have to remember, volume 1 through volume 19 received the Nihilia Abstad of St. Honorable de Francia. Uh, it received the imprimatur of, of Archbishop May. When he died, he wanted he, he when he went to heaven 
he says if, if he had known, he would have had everything had the, the uh, imprimatur on it. But Jesus says he will finish his work in heaven. And that's what he's doing. He's finishing his work in heaven. Now, we cooperate with, with St. Honorable de Francia. Uh, and we read, we study, we put this into practice that Jesus has given to us. Jesus says that. If you have the writings, it is I myself who have given them to you. God has given us these writings. And all that he's asking us is, they're yours, read them. Now, we can make every excuse in the world not to read, and we do. We've got to stop that. We've got to say, you say this is the gift of gifts, fiat. You say this is the prodigy of prodigies, Louisa Picard, the divine wealth, fiat. I want this. You say you're going to let me share in divinity, I want this. You say that you're going to bring about the grand marriage, I want this. So this is the desire. Jesus says you're halfway there. Now get all the way there by reading, by studying, by putting this into practice. So I'll end there in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Wow. Always jam-packed. I feel so overwhelmed with everything he's teaching us. I have to go back and listen to this again several times, I think. We're at our closing prayer. O oh God, the bestower of the third fiat and lover of man's sanctification, we humbly beseech your clemency. Grant that all souls, past, present, and future, through the intercession of Our Lady, Mother and Queen of the Holy Divine Will, Saint Anibale Maria de Francia, and the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, may attain to the fullness of life in the Holy Divine Will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And all together, glory be to God. So, our prayer cynical is coming to a close officially. However, remember we carry within ourselves what we've learned in order to begin living fused with it in our personal environments, agreeing to allow his will and not ours to reign. Fiat. So our closing hymn is the seasonal Marian hymn of the Salve Regina. And I'll leave you with that. And God willing, we'll be together again next week. Fiat. Yeah.